Hello, everybody. My name is Richard Bauer. I'm a oral and maxillofacial surgeon at the University of Pittsburgh. And today we're going to be talking about one of my cases uh, for reconstruction of the anterior maxilla. So the situation is an 18-year-old female that was congenitally missing a tooth number 10. Uh, she had previous surgeries done at that site that involved guided bone regeneration and implant placement. Ultimately, the implant had failed, uh, was removed, and the graft was attempted to be redone at that point. When we evaluate this patient's risk profile, she does have high aesthetic concerns, uh, and there are issues with uh, amount of bone availability, both in a ridge width and height aspect. Ultimately, we'll have uh, a two-phase approach. Uh, we will graft for uh, increase in bone volume uh, and secondarily uh, have implant placement with uh, immediate provisionalization. Uh, there's a component of cortico and, and Kensel's bone associated with this uh, harvested uh, ramal graft. Uh, this is from the patient's left mandible. Now you can see the uh, ramal graft in position uh, in the in the patient's maxilla at the uh, edentulous site 10. Uh, in this patient, we elevated the palatal tissue uh, and I've used uh, BioOS collagen to bulk out the palatal aspect. I like to combine uh, BioOS and the autogenous harvest that I previously mentioned uh, and fill in the uh, junction of the ramal graft and native bone. We want to uh, maximize the soft tissue response. And for this, uh, I really like the mucograft matrix. There was a uh, vertical release done posteriorly. This is a curvilinear beveled release uh, extending from the uh, releasing that periosteum at the base of the flap really provides a, a tension-free closure. So now we've uh, advanced approximately uh, five months. You can see that the hardware uh, from the uh, ramal graft fixation has been removed. Uh, we have uh, an excellent uh, subperiosteal elevation. There's excellent transition across the uh, bone grafting site with excellent integration of our graft. Uh, the implant driver still uh, in place at the platform level uh, just to show emergence. And here uh, is a postoperative panoramic x-ray. Uh, this is uh, immediately following the uh, removal of the fixation screws. And here we have the patient at the one week post-operative follow-up. Adequate hard uh, tissue reconstruction is really important. Uh, we need to pay attention to the soft tissue manipulation as well. Utilizing the bio loss at the periphery of the onlay graft is uh, I think an essential component in order to transition the onlay graft appropriately and, and give optimal aesthetic recontouring. The mucograft in this case has really allowed us to maximize our soft tissue uh, profile at the implant site and provide us uh, something to work with during the transitional uh, and recontouring phase once the implant has been placed. A few keys and instruments that I really think are pivotal to gaining the outcomes that we had set, some of the biomaterials that I find that just absolutely cannot be replaced for, for this case uh, are our bio loss our bioloss collagen and, and mucograft. A combination of these with the patient's autogenous bone have really led to a significant site regeneration. Again, my name is uh, Dr. Richard Bauer. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to review this case with me. Thank you so much.